Well, today is a day unlike any except, of course, last February when the Super Bowl came to town. It's a day when the pastors all over the place are preaching very short sermons in order to get time to have their Super Bowl parties all ready to go. And of course, I've got so much stuff I want to give to you that I can't because, you know, it's just i got to get home and get my place ready for the Super Bowl. Mark the first chapter, the 21st verse, through the 28th verses. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching? With authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. May the Lord add the blessings to the reading and to the hearing of God's Word. I'm not quite sure where, uh, where the pastor from last week left you, but... Here, we are following Mark's very cryptic statements. And I'm sure that I have told you before that Mark is so intent and so intelligent that he puts into very, very few words what a whole lifetime could fill up. Here, we have listened in Mark before to the coming of John the Baptist, the light leading the way, the, the person making the road straight. And now we have this cryptic little statement before, a few verses before, and John the Baptist was arrested by Herod the king, and Jesus went on his way spreading the gospel of the good news. John the Baptist is treated by Mark like, kind of like at night when you meet an oncoming car. You see the headlights for a couple of seconds and then you see the taillights in your rearview mirror. He's there and then he's gone. That's how much of a story Mark puts to John the Baptist, whereas the other gospel writers put much more. So you have to be very careful in this passage. And to recognize that what John is doing in this passage is he is comparing authoritative, an authoritative message with an authoritarian message. Now, authoritarian message, you know, is, is one that says, spare the rod, spoil the child. And so that gives you permission to beat your child. Not, not at all. The authoritative message comes to us from Jesus who says, Love your neighbor as yourself. And upon that law, if you really take everything back, if you took every law that's on the books today, you'd bring it right back down to love your neighbor as yourself. You could put the Ten Commandments on that. You could put all of our, our books of law upon that because if you love your neighbor as yourself, are you going to steal their horse? Are you going to steal a pen from them? Are you going to steal a penny from them? No. If you love your neighbor as yourself, are you going to look covetously at their wives? You might look appreciatively, but not covetously. Are you going to then run off with their husbands, with your friend's husband, or anything else if you really love your neighbor as yourself? Are you going to denigrate yourself in putting yourself into positions that are going to end up destroying your life. No. 
if you really love your neighbor as yourself, you see, all of those laws come down to that authoritative message that Jesus brings, the kingdom of God is near. The kingdom of God is near. Believe in the good news. And that is that difference between authoritative and authoritarian that John is trying to get us to understand. He teaches in the synagogue, in that philosophical treatise in the synagogue, if you, if you would, or that religious setting. And then he takes that, that teaching from the synagogue, and what does he do? He makes it real. Because if you really love your neighbor, you're going to help them to get the demons out of their lives. Somebody looks at me and says, Demons, Sam? Well, I've got to say this to you. After all of our education, after all of our studies and all of our hard work, and all of our disbelief in demons and belief in the Holy Spirit, evil still exists in this world. Evil still exists. And the demons in our lives are there, and they're very real. I don't know what your demon is. It could be sports. When you look at the uh, TV today, you're going to find people dressed up like cardinals, and you're going to find people dressed up like, like penguins. Oh, no, this is the Steelers, aren't they? <laughs> penguins are the hockey team. <laughs> like, like Steelers carrying around the ha hammers on their heads and, and all kinds of things. I mean, you look at, at the cheese heads, you know what football team I'm talking about when people wear uh, a slice of cheese on their head, you know. But how do you tell Christians out there in the world? Do we wear, a, wear huge crosses that say, I'm a Christian? Do we wear t-shirts that say, hey, look at me, honk, you know, I, I'm a Christian? Uh, most of the times we do not. But today you're going to see that there, are, there is a, a religious society called football fan. Just like there's a religious society called baseball fan and hockey fan and, and NASCAR fan. And there's a religious society called give me all the money you've got because I want it. And there's a religious society that says I'm going to keep all of your money and you're not getting it back. And there's all kind of religious societies. There's all kind of demons within us that do not live up to the law of love your neighbor as yourself. The wilderness experience of Jesus, the 40 days and 40 nights that Mark preached, and he was in the wilderness 40 days and 40 nights, the angels ministered to him, and now he went preaching. You see how Mark, he, he doesn't worry too much about that stuff. He wants to get to the meat and the heart, and here is the meat and the heart. Jesus has authority. Jesus is not authoritarian. Jesus has authority that works within your personality. Jesus is not going to override your personality. Jesus is going to work within your personality, and you have to recognize it. Now, is that faith based on works? No. Jesus has already done all the work that's necessary. But just like this, this man filled with demons had to recognize Jesus as the Son of God, so do we. It's not works. It's just faith. It's a recognition that we are not entities unto ourselves. And so the real reason that God has intervened in this world is for Jesus to preach the good news and that you need to believe on the good news because He is the good news. And he goes forth to preach gospel of good news because the time has come. God has declared the time's come. The kingdom of God is near. It's right next to you. And as a turn from your sins and believe this good news, that is what this man possessed of demons did. Have you come to destroy us? No. Have you come to reject us? No. I've come that you might have life and life everlasting. And this is what